Welcome to the Nativo Shalom Shir. Uh, I'm Rabbi Nathan Davidovich, and I'm speaking to you from Efrat, Israel. The day after Simchat Torah, which here in Israel we celebrated as Isru Chag, meaning the day, the additional festival celebration after, but in the rest of the world, uh, you still had a second and last day of Yom Tov, combining, uh, separating Simchat Torah and Shemini Yatzeres. Uh, we're going to start today's tonight's study in the Tibet Shalom, as we always do this safer. Uh, since we've now begun a new book of the Torah, Bereshit, so we're going to start with the book of Bereshit, and we're going to start on page Chof Vav 26 of the Tibet Shalom. Just as a quick forward, yesterday when we finished the Torah, the the last words of the Torah, of the Torah reading of, of the Vorim, were Le'enei Kal Yisrael, in the eyes of all of Israel. If you take the Rosh tables, the initial letters of Le'enei Kal Yisrael, it spells Kli. It spells Kli, which is a vessel. Now the last letter of the Torah, and that's going to be alluded to in this in the Shalom, but the last letter of the Torah is Lamed. And the first letter of the Torah, Bereshis, is Beit. Lamed Beit is Lev. So we are taught, you know, the, the, the secrets that are contained in just a few words are just unbelievable. But we are taught that in order to be a Kli, a vessel, to be able to serve Hashem, what you have to do is have a vessel that contains Lev, that contains your heart. That It's all that Hashem wants from us. He doesn't want just physical actions. He wants us to be connected, and connected from the heart to the heart. Uh, it says, mm-hmm. uh, Words that come out of the heart go into the heart. So we have to serve Hashem with heart. That should be the clue. That's the overriding, the overriding concept. Now, we're going to talk tonight about the... Uh, what happened with, with the two brothers, uh, the two sons of Adam and Chava, Cain and Hevel, Cain and Abel. And I'm just going to read the first few lines uh, from the Torah as to what exactly happened to set the, the context of what we're doing. By he Hevel rowed some. Hevel was a shepherd. But Cain, his brother, he was a farmer. By he became Yomim, after they grew up, number of, uh, in the case Yomim says literally days, but it means after a number of years, they were already grown up. V'yovo Kayin mipri ha'adama. Kayin felt that he should bring a uh, uh, an offering uh, to God. So he brought it from the things that grew on the land. Mincha la'ashem, an offering to God. The Hevel hevi gam hu. And then Hevel also brought Mibachorotzono, from the the uh, uh, the first of his of his sheep, uh, the best of his ume ume chalvei, the best of his sheep. Vayisha uh, Hashem el Hevel el Minchasu, and Hashem looked to and accepted the offering of of Hevel of Abel, el Kain el Minchasu, but to Kain and his Offering, lo He didn't. He didn't accept it. He didn't turn to it. He heard the Kain mode, and Kain got very angry. But he blew upon him, and he became very depressed, very upset. Literally, his face fell. He blew upon him, he became very angry, very upset, depressed. Hashem said to Kain, "Hey, wait a minute." Why are you so upset, angry? Why are you in this state? Hello, im seitev seis, im lo seitev. He says, you can correct, you can correct your error. If you only want to uh, bring the right, the right kind of an offering, you can do it, and I'll forgive you. I'm not going to hold anything against you. Uh, but if you don't do it, Lapeta chatat rovets, 
<laughs> sin will be waiting for you at, at your door. Uh, and then you'll be in trouble. That's that's the, the wording in the... In the <coughs> Let me turn the air off. That's, no. no? Okay. Uh, so in the Tivo Shalom, the first part of it, he quotes, he quotes that. Uh, and he says... Going down to the, uh, actually the seventh line, where, he, where his, uh, that, that I just read this. He says, Yesh lahavim be'inyan korbonos kaim We have to understand, what, what were these sacrifices about? The two sacrifice, the sacrifices of the sheep and of the, the, the produce of the land. What were they really about? Hodech siv vayobo kaim mipri hodoma. It says, Cain, Cain brought from the fruit of the land. Upewish Rashi. And Rashi explains that as meaning, <coughs> Minha Garua. Minha Garua, meaning that which wasn't so good, the, the least favorable. Uh, the, uh, this, uh, some commentators refer to that as the, the pasolet, the, uh, the trash of the land, and nothing, nothing good. Uh, Umakoro, hmm? where do they get that from? Now here it says, he says, Makoro midrash comes from a midrash, and Bereshis Raba, Shehedimiyapsolos that that Cain actually brought from the worst part of the of the of the land. Vahadover Benuga Lesefo, it doesn't make sense. The Tivush Shomer says this doesn't make any sense. I mean, he says Sharei Me'atzmo. It's not that somebody was forcing Cain, Cain to bring this offering. He did it of his own free will. So here he decides he's going to give an offering to God, and you're saying it's trash? What's that all about? That's what the people was asking. What's that all about? How does that work? The people says he wasn't, he wasn't obligated to do this. There was no commandment at that point saying you got to bring me offerings. Uh, nobody was forcing him. Uh, uh, in, in fact, he did it of his own free will before his brother brought his offering. So what's going on here? He brought Salahavi min If he wanted to bring an offering to God, Madua Bacharis Hagura, why would he? He's in a situation where he's deciding, hey, I want to do this. Sounds like a good thing to do. Does it make sense that he would pick the worst stuff to give to God, to bring as an offering? Mm. That doesn't make sense. Old sort of beer, yeah. The Tiv Chai says <coughs> you have to explain. Omru, v'hevel hevi gamhu. When I when I read this and it's repeated up above, it says hevel also brought from the first of his sheep. But the word gamhu seems extra. Uh, it could have just said v'hevel hevi b'mecharot. Hevel brought from his the first of his sheep. And we know that the Torah doesn't have an extra uh, letter, let alone an extra word. Here are two words, gamhu, also him. What does that What does that tell us? Uh, and David Shalom says, It would have been sufficient for the Torah simply to have said, Hevel brought from the the first of his of his, uh, uh, of his, of his uh, produce, uh, I'm sorry, of his of his sheep, and that would be sufficient. So those are the those are the two questions that the Tivo Shalom is setting up. Let's see what the the answer is that he gives. Yeshlomer, it be said, those say, the those that say, Hayin al kimad the ola bediu kapasuki. What what comes specifically out of out of these these sentences, shehevel nemer hevi gamhu ibchoros tsono. When it talks about hevel, and it says gamhu, he also he brought from the first part of tsono, his sheep, his sheep. Ume chalbeim and their their the best part. Bilu bakayin kasiv with with kain it's written. <coughs> He brought from the fruit of the land, not from the fruit of his own land. 
It wasn't his own produce. He just saw it, okay. This stuff's laying out there, I'll give it. I mean, okay. he didn't grow it personally in he soil and sweat. Yeah, and exactly it. right. And the materials I was going to talk about that. You know, somebody works to get something done. A farmer had to work hard. A shepherd had to work hard in those days. You know, you got a little sheep born, you got to nurture it, you got to take care of it. Uh, you know, we have the, the all the stories that are going to be later on in, in Bereshit of our Avot, uh, who were shepherds and who, you know, spent a lot of time <coughs> caring for these sheep. One would wander off and carry them back. And so it's a bigger deal. A farmer. Uh, we had the the mayor at this past uh, Yantav, Simcha Torah night, uh, of uh, spending a, uh, having a meal with a modern day farmer in Israel. Uh, Ari Abramowitz, who has a, uh, a farm that they just started not too far from here. Have you been? I planted uh, trees there. I promise we don't. We promise uh, don't, 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 wait, don't, don't talk about it now because we're gonna, it's all being Raising recorded. Raising sheep. Oh, yeah. God. Raising sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's not an easy job. So he goes on to say, Hainu shehevel hevi mishalo. The difference is that Hevel, Abel, brought from what was his. Shehevi es advorim hachavivim alav, biyoter bohem, biyoter. He brought those things that were very dear to him. Bohem mashkia es kolamolo biyato tamid. He invested all of his work and all of his energy to to get these sheep to to be in a in a position where they'd have a nice nice offering to give to God. Shedover sheadam mashkia bo. Uh, a, a person where a person, a, a thing where a person invests his time, Chavi Veslo Adlam Adlam becomes very, very valuable to him, very special. So the Chay Nikra, therefore, it says, Shehevi Mishalo, he brought of his own. The Choros Sono, from the first and the best of his sheep, of his flock. Shinasan Minchal Hashem Yisborach. As Hadavar Shilo, a Chaviv Alav Yotar, he gave the present to God of that which was most uh, most precious to him. Masha'in Cain, Cain, which is not the case with Cain. With Cain, Havi Mipriho Domestam, he just brought not from his own work, not from his own farm, but just produce he'd see laying out somewhere else. Lo Havi Reishi Spikuri Admas, he didn't bring the first fruits. Of, of the land, of most of his land, uh, where he invested his time and his work to, to bring it out. Because since he didn't grow it, he didn't spend the time uh, putting his energy into it, it's not considered his own. He just saw it laying down there. So, Mimela, Af im Havi, Peros told him. Even if he brought good fruit, and it wasn't it wasn't basolit like they said, it wasn't wasn't garbage, but it was nice fruit that he saw laying in the, in, in the field. Even if he brought that, it's not the same. It's not the same value to him as if he had grown it himself and invested his time and energy. and this is considered min hagrua from the worst part, kivon shlo. Because he didn't invest his heart into that. And we talked at the beginning about the kli that we need, the lave, to, to serve Hashem. So Cain did not invest his heart. But Hevel, on the contrary, his brother brought that which was very dear to him, the best part of his flock. This is what he brought as an offering to God. You can also say on this, with Cain it's written, he brought from the fruit of the, of the earth. He took whatever came to his hand. Whatever happened to be there, he didn't even go out searching for it. He decided, "Oh, I'm going to make an offering to God. I'm just, oh, I'm going to look. Oh, there's a fruit. I'll do that. Uh, something like that." 
right? Whatever the, whatever's, whatever's there. He didn't even invest the time and energy to, to choose something, to go out and look for something really good. He just took what was there. Abel Hevel, Hevel brought from the best of his flock, Hatov the, the, the very best, Umechabeyan, Arab Yoter, that was mixed up with all the good, Shebocher as a, as a Meshubach Yoter, Mizeh Hevi Minichal Hashem Yisborah. He picked out that which was the best and brought that as his offering. A Torah Kedosh Kodesh Milamedet Lodu, Mizeh. And the Torah is teaching us with this, Haderech Bavodet Hashem Yisborah. How one has to serve Hashem. You know, we've just got gone through Baruch Hashem, a period starting with Rosh Chodesh Elul, going through uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Shemini Yitzharis, and Simchas Torah. We thought we were serving Hashem, and hopefully we were serving Hashem. But here's the message of serving Hashem that the, the Tibor Shalom says the Torah is teaching us. Shiloh dai bezeh, she Yehudi no se mincha. It's not just enough for a Jew to bring an offering to Hashem, to bring a present to Hashem. Uh, these days, we don't have korbanos. We don't have offerings. We don't have a base of mignesh. So what has taken the place of korbanos today? Tefillah. Tefillah, our prayer. Our certain, tefillah is called, Shemona is called avoda. Uh, Amida avoda. It's the avoda is the tefillah. Uh, but tefillah is something that has to be me'alev. So it says, it's not enough to just say the words of prayer. Elahut tzorech latet et hayakar v'achavi b'yot. has to give the best. V'im einu notein et hadover hayakar v'achashu v'lo b'yoter. If he doesn't give the thing that is best to him, in other words, if you don't put your best effort forth, uh, just taking the analogy away from the, the actual sacrifice to bring it to a concept of prayer. If you don't poke, you, you don't, you know, your mind is wandering around. You're distracted. You're looking at seeing what somebody's wearing, what somebody's not wearing, how they're, you know, what, what they sound like, how they're dominating. Are they dominating, listening? Are they saying the words? Are they stumbling the words? Do they really know how to read? What are they doing here? Everything but paying attention to what you're supposed to be doing. So if you're not doing that, she'enu makri gatsmoso, benigud letevo, you're not sacrificing yourself, uh, contrary to what your nature might be. Bavshu osek b'Torah uvavoda. Even though you are busy with Torah and service of God, you're davening a lot. Harei kolze mishtalev imtivo, einu benigud leteva. This is all. Uh, it, it basically you're doing what comes naturally to you not going above yourself, out of your character, to be somebody else. That the whole, the whole purpose of, of the Yom Yom is that by the time we're done, by the time we've done tshuva, we've asked Hashem to forgive us what we've done, and we've resolved to do different things, to be a different person, and to fact, in fact become a different person. That's what, you have to, <laughs> that's what you have to do. So if you do that, if you're only just going through the road with all these distractions, Hashem is not interested in that. He doesn't receive these kinds of offerings, these kinds of prayers. What is the most important? From the very first and the best of your flock. That which a Jew gives over, which is most his most valuable thing. One of the things you're supposed to do on the, uh, uh, it's really the, 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 the uh, Berdich of a Rebbe, the Levi Yitzchak says. It's his that, yesterday, Thursday. Tonight's Thursday. Oh, Thursday, okay. So he says that Yom Kippur is not Mechaper. Yom Kippur, you can't forgive your sins unless you, are, you nullify your ego. And sometimes our ego is the most valuable thing to us. And maybe when we're in shul or davening, we have to work to get rid of this ego. How do I stop thinking that the world revolves around me and that somebody else is important and that I'm only whatever God did to me, I'm, I'm it. I'm, I'm, you know, I have no uh, 
No powers of my own except that which God gives to me. It's not that that not that I did this. So he says, you have to give that. So you have to you have to invest all your energies. Through that you'll bring an offering to Hashem. So it says that Hashem accepted Hevel's offering his offering his offering because of the way it was given was accepted before Hashem Karumas but Torah Kodesh and it's it's hinted at as the Torah says it starts with the letter and it finishes with the letter Lamed Shehem Otyot Lev. That's the word Lev, heart. Bahainu, Shirachmana Liba Boy. All Hashem wants from us is our heart. He wants our emotions. He wants us to have a direct connection to Hashem. Not just mimicking words, not just saying things. It's not a. Judaism is not a spectator sport. It's being truly involved, truly given of yourself. At Halev Shehudi Mashkia Bemincha, he wants the heart that a Jew exerts uh, and expands to bring this offering. Chol Erech Hamincha Nimdad Lefi Midas Halev Shehudi Mashkia Ba. The whole value of any offering that you give to God, and in this concept, any prayers that you give to God, feel that you give to God, is measured by the amount of, uh, the amount that you invest your heart in it. And therefore, Cain, who brought only from the, the fruit of the ground, wasn't his, he didn't invest any anything of his heart in getting it. Then that's why they say it's like he gave from the very worst. Contrary to Hevel, the Hevel, he gave those things with him mixed up with most most uh, valuable to him. Uh, something that a person really desires. Bashkia as called he put his whole heart, he invested his whole heart into this. Mincha Kazu, the Kubelas Rasul Lifneya Shemispur. An offering where you're giving your whole heart, a tefillah where you're giving your whole heart is accepted by Hashem. Will be your omru, now we go to the next question he had. Bahamal Havi Gamhu. What's the language, the additional language of Gamhu? Also him. Yesh Lamar al Derach, I'm a super Amor and Akarish Mikur and Zukhuskilenu. Uh, you can explain it by what is told, the story that is told by, about uh, the Rebbe from Kuvrim. Shepam Achat, B'tfilet Musaf Shal Shabbos. One time when he was uh, in the additional prayer on Shabbos, the Musaf prayer on Shabbos, Kasher Higiyah, when he came to Litevo, to the words, V'sham Nasa Lefonecha, and there you will make, you will bring, as, as Korbonos Chavoseinu are obligatory offerings to Medim, Kasidram, the offerings that are always there in their order, Umusofim, Kilchosim, and then you add uh, different things according to their law. That's Musaf Yom HaShabbos, and this Musaf that we do on this day of Shabbos, Nasav and Akul of shall we will bring and sacrifice before you. When he said these words, talking about the offerings that we should bring on Shabbos, what happened? Irish Olamos. He shook the whole world. The whole world was, was shaking. Others say that he fainted. He fainted when he said this. And afterwards he explained what happened. This Musaf, this additional prayer of Shabbos, this additional offering of Shabbos that we're going to bring before you. Means that ourselves, it's as if ourselves were being sacrificed to you. The Eishlomer, and others say, Shazem Arumas Gam, the Kafal Halashon, 
Nasavanakrivu of He says, others explain this to me. That's what it means to say we will bring and sacrifice before you. Nasa, Hainu Asiyata Korba, that's the physical act bringing the sacrifice. If you compare it to prayer, it's the physical act of saying the words. But not grieve, but the sacrifice. Hainu Shinakrivis Atzmenu Kalil Korban Lasham The other part is sacrifice yourself, putting your heart into this to serve Hashem. Vazep Perush. And this is the explanation of the Hevel Hedi Gamhu. The Hevel also brought. Shinosef ala mincha shehevi ibechoros tsono mechalbehem. In addition to the best of his flock that he brought, Hevi Gam es atzmo, he brought himself. Shehikriv es atzmo legamri lekorban nasham yispora. He was totally in the moment. He totally was, was totally invested in what he was doing. It's as if he had gave himself, not just this cheat that he's putting on, not just the words of, of Tefillah that we're saying, but putting yourself, putting your all into it, putting your heart into it. That was the difference. Masha'en came Kayan, and that wasn't the case with Kayan. Hevi rakli prihu adoma. He only brought from the produce on the ground. He saw the apple laying on the ground. Avalas atzmolo he creep. By the way, the apple is not specifically anywhere said or even interpreted. I just threw that in. So please don't, don't quote me saying that Cain brought an apple. I'm not saying that. I use that, I use that for an illusion only, for illustrative purposes only. The key is he didn't bring himself. He, hmm? he didn't have his heart in it. Was that Perush? And this is what it means. Ayisha Hashem El Hevel Vel Bin Chaso that Hashem turned, accepted Hevel's offering. Because two things are, are written here El Hevel, to Hevel, Hainu El Korban Hevel Atzmo. God accepted the Korban, uh, him, the Korban himself. And as the words written, it says, <coughs> is the word, wait, let me just see. Second, it's also written the word mincha, right? Uh, so he's, so he's, he's both ways. So, he's, so the word the word hikri refers uh, to actually the actual physical act to bring in the korban. The minchaso, but the word minchaso to his offering. The second part of it, the word mincha, refers to giving of himself, giving those things that was most valuable. Not that he just took anything, but his heart was in it. He invested the energy and the heart into it. Well, Kain, al minchoso, and to Kain and his offering, lo shah, he didn't turn, didn't accept. Shekain, lo master his hatzmo, he didn't have a serious nefesh, he didn't put his heart in it. But God, the mincha shehevi, lo master klum. And the offering that he, that he brought, it was just a physical act. It had no meaning. The Omer Hashem al Kain. Hashem said to Kain, Alohim Seitev Seit. If you, he gave him a chance. He says, if you do it right, you'll be able. It'll be accepted, and I won't, you know, I won't hold it against you. And this is a, this is a very big thing. Devorim Elo Omer Lo Kodesh Baruch Hu. Hashem is telling him, Achar Shenichshal Bavos Min Chaso. After you stumble in bringing your offering, after you stumble in your tefillah, after you stumble and do something that's that's against what God has commanded. You don't, you don't bring a, a mincha, an offering to God this way. Hashem says, there's still hope for you. You can correct this. The fact that you stumbled shouldn't be an impediment to you. Yeshlamer habir bezeh, and this is explained as kamomer, as his grandfather said, When the Yetzer Hora, when the negative inclination entices you to commit an Avera, to do something that is against the Torah, more than the, the enticement to do what is wrong, the Yetzer Hora doesn't stop. It doesn't stop then. What happens? Is Ritzono Benefilas Haruach Haba Achrab. 
the whole purpose of the Eitzur Hora is to to <coughs> impact the the will uh, and the feelings that you have after this, because without the Eitzur Hora, if you do something wrong, you would uh, you know you should recognize that God always accepts our tshuva. All you have to do is turn to God and ask Him, and God will accept. But when you think, wow, I'm done for. Nothing I can do. That's what the Yetzirah wants you to do. He wants you to give up completely. She'ikar matarat ha the main job of the Yetzirah is huzeh shalachar achet ha'odam nofa barucho. He wants a person to get into a, a state of depression after he does an Avera. After he does something wrong, he wants a person to think, I'm done for. And then what does that lead to? I'm done for. I may as well not do anything else. Right? Can't try. Shemizad nofahu owed for yored matem matem. With this, he starts falling more and more and more. Uh, I, I once had this hoot of being with the, the Satma Rebbe of Shalom, the old title bomb, in his library. And he... Hmm? In uh, Williamsburg, when I was a kid. Uh, I was a young kid. My father was there. My father was there with me. And I, I, he, he gave a little Torah. He said, what if we, in the Shema, the second paragraph of the, the Shema, we say, V'sartem min haderech. Asher tom And you turn away from the thing and you'll serve other gods. He says, what does that mean, V'sartem? You'll turn away. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden you've been a God-fearing Jew and the next moment you're going to be turning away from God. You're going to become a worshiper of idols. No, the sartem is a very slow process. First you do this, then you do a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. You start doing things that are bad, they start suddenly start looking like they're good. This is what the Teva Chom is saying here. He said, you read mata mata, little by little, you fall deeper and deeper. And that's that's what the Yetzir Hora wants. Because the Yetzir Bashifriya Kodesh, as it's said in our holy books, Sha'atzvus Enu Avera. Being depressed is not a sin. But, Ach, he mevia lechol ha'avelos. But that brings to all the avelos. Because you have, you no longer have any self-worth. I'm not worth anything. So if I'm not worth anything, God's not listening to me. What am I going to serve God for? The simcha and joy Ain't no mitzvah. The simcha really isn't a mitzvah. I, I'm not sure how he says that because it says, with the tochacha, the reason the curses happen is kilo yizot to Hashem. The simcha is an insert by Hashem with joy. But okay, maybe that'll fit into. That'll fit into. He said, he said, simcha itself is not the mitzvah, but what? Achi mevia lechala mitzvah. So it brings you to all the mitzvahs. So I guess yeah, that fits in. So if simcha brings you brings you to the mitzvahs, and you're doing the mitzvahs, then you won't have had the curses. This is what Hashem said to Kain. Why did you get angry? Why did you get depressed? If, if, you're, if you would only do right, I will turn to you. You will be, you'll be, you'll be able to raise you up. Even after you stumbled with this offering that you brought, that you didn't do it the right way, even if you stumbled with your prayers, even if you stumbled with an Avera, even if you do something that is wrong, im tzaiti, if you look at the good part, tezak mehata v'simcha, you hold on and go from here with joy. Yes, I did this, but now I have joy because I know that Hashem accepts my tshuva. I know that Hashem accepts my prayers. If you go with joy, say you will be risen up. Hare ayadezeh tisalat, because of that joy, it will help rise you up. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is only a test. You can take those horrible things that are happening, the things that you've done, the things that are happening to you, and you have two choices. You can either be depressed about them, you can be down in the dumps, you can say, I can't go anywhere from here. Or you can look at it as a test that Hashem wants you to go through 
and raise it up to a higher level and turn that sadness to simcha. The rotate, but if you don't, if you don't do that, shetia atzuv v'nafal ruach. If you become depressed and saddened, kamo shomer vayichar lakayim yod, kayim became very angry. Vayipolo ponim became depressed. O oz lepetach chata rovets. Gates of horror is waiting to grab you, waiting at your door to take you further down. You'll have a helper. You won't have to do it alone. You won't have to sink further away from God. Yitzhah is there to help you. Icha mesor biyadi hasitra You put yourself totally in the hands of the, that negative uh, force in our lives. Kamad Omar, the Targum Yonatan Menuziel, as it said in the Targum Yonatan Menuziel, Shekayin Achin Kafar. Kayan <coughs> was really uh, a denier, denier of the existence of God. Lomar Lacely did the Lacely line says, There's no judge and there's no judgment. It doesn't matter what I do. The Kafar Ba'olam Haba Uba'od Ikarim. He was not only he was uh, a Kofar, a denier of the world to come and other things. That's according to the Targum Yonatum and Azeel. Kamosh Omer Marner Sabakosh Melchavas Tuchelin, as his grandfather said, the Baal Tshuva, Echad Shbalafana. Once a Baal Tshuva, a person who had done Tshuva, had repented, came before him, he says, and he tells him, he gives him this advice, Im Sameach, if you will be happy, Tucholit Gaber Alakol, you will be able to overcome everything. But, Im Atsuv, if you will be sad, Oz, Everything will fall apart. You'll return to where you were. And for a year and a half, this Baal Tshuva followed the advice and he grabbed everything with Simcha, with joy. And he, he held on to his Tshuva. But one time, there was a dispute. A fight, a disagreement in his house. And he sat say a libo and he became saddened. He became saddened and depressed by it. And through that act, which was the catalyst, he returned to where he was before. This is the avoda. This is the service. This is the task that a Jew has to do after you fall. And we all fall. We all stumble. You know, we, there's, there's no person <coughs> alive uh, or ever who has not stumbled on something. These chazek, our job is to hold on to whatever we have, all that happens to us, with joy. Upamim, and there are times, shekol hanisoyin, Sometimes the test is not really on whether you can withstand the Avera, whether you can stand doing wrong, but rather how you react to it. As I say many, many times, we cannot change what happens to us. We cannot choose the situations that we're in, but we can choose how we react to them. And if we react to them with Simcha, that's the key. He says, also, with these tests, im yitzchazek l'acher shenechshol. If you are strong after you have fallen, was halo im seitiv seit. Then you will be. If you are strong afterwards, you'll be able to do the right thing, and then you will be raised up again. Uh, you will be in the good graces of God if you speak. You won't have to be sad. You won't have to think, "What can I do now?" You're sitting in this in the presence of God. As David Melk said, the one thing I want from you, Hashem, is shifting base Hashem, I want to sit in your house the whole time. I don't want to ever have the, the connection between us severed. My brocha to all of us as we approach this, as we go into this new year, uh, we have Simchas Torah. We have to take the Simchas Torah 
the simcha of the Torah, the simcha that we had yesterday, and bring it to the entire year. It's not just one day a year. Every single day, we should have the simcha that we had in Simcha's Torah. Amen. Thank you all for thank you all for listening. When David was alive, that was great. You know, throughout wherever we would go, we were visiting people.